So in the game's opening, Stanley issues a challenge. He says there are more supervillains than we can shake a web at. Well, we're going to use as little webbing in the combat as possible and do it on hard mode. We're going through a tiny bit of the first stage right here just to establish that yeah, I, I still do need to web swing to get from place to place and I will be using the web to flip switches, just not in the actual combat. Tingling. Something's going on here. Also, some of the bosses have fail-safes that prevent you from using only melee while fighting them, so this isn't going to be a perfect webless run, just as perfect as we can get it. I'm already at full health. I'll also be skipping around to the yeah, most interesting right. places, so that way you don't have to watch me play through the entire game again. So as you probably suspected, this is where it starts to get, uh, interesting when you try to do a webless run. Everything before this is simple enough, but we do have that guard patrolling the outside of the cubicles, and we can't stop him with webbing this time. Your best bet is to free everybody while his back is turned, otherwise he's just going to turn right around and shoot them. It's pretty much a guaranteed death if you don't time things properly. They're messing with us. Start the timer on the bomb, and take out all the hostages. This is easily the most difficult part of the stage, and the only real solution is just to tank it. We're going to be using all kicks, because in addition to dealing more damage, they incapacitate the enemy for longer. The enemies will focus on Spidey until the hostages start moving, and then they'll just aim for them. You tackle this stage nearly the same way, the only difference is being that these guys actually get to hurl their grenades, and Scorpion chases after Jameson much faster, which means there's no room to goof around and fight all the enemies. Oh yeah, and these guys take significantly more damage as well. The trick to taking down Scorpion without webs is just patience. You have to hit him in the back while he's focused on Jameson, and then evade him until he focuses on Jameson again. If you try to attack him while he's trying to attack you, you won't be able to stun him. This is kinda neat, if only because it reveals more about how Scorpion's AI behavior works. Pardon the editing, but you didn't need to see five more minutes of me flailing around. There's no real observable difference in the police chase stage, but here's a billboard I missed earlier. There's also no real difference in the Rhino boss fight considering, well, you don't even need to use your webbing to beat him in the first place, though on hard mode, he does take a lot more damage and you have to use these barrels. Hey, that is expensive equipment. The generators don't do nearly enough damage to take him out on their own. Really quick, here's a reference to the Hellfire Club from the X-Men, and now for some disappointment. I'm pretty sure it's entirely impossible to beat Venom on hard with only melee. Heck, I'm pretty sure it's impossible on normal. And not for lack of trying, the only attack that stuns Venom that's a melee attack is the jump kick, but that sends him so far away that he can grab you and shake the life out of you again. And on top of that, Spider-Man's jump kick is designed in a way that prevents spamming. Uh, sometimes Spider-Man will land perfectly after a jump kick, and sometimes he won't. And when he doesn't land perfectly, well, that leaves him vulnerable. And on hard mode, Venom packs quite a punch. So what you're seeing here is the first in around an hour of failed attempts, and I don't think it can be done. Or if it can, it would require a rather obscene amount of luck. So fast. As for the lizard men later in Venom's chapter, the easiest way to deal with them is essentially to use their mob mentality against them by getting them stuck on each other so you can fight them one on one. This strategy applies pretty much every time you fight them, and when it doesn't, well, you can just evade them. And the easiest method by far to deal with the subway ride is just to completely cheap out and jump back and forth between the cars so the lizard men can't hit you. It's not pretty, it's not elegant, but it's effective. The only other thing really worth mentioning in Venom's chapter is that the water raises again much faster after you lower it, so, you know, it just requires better timing. This also applies to the tunnel you have to crawl through a little later. 
For the symbiote chapter, the best solution is just to avoid combat altogether whenever possible, including in the elevator, by just kinda hanging out at the top. Again, it's cheap, but it works. The hardest thing about the symbiote chapters while webless is easily the generators, but you can take them out slowly with one punch at a time if you need to. It's really not much more difficult, you just have to watch out for symbiotes taking potential pot shots at you. As far as the Doc Ock fight is concerned, things are mostly the same, it just takes way longer because Melee does almost no damage to him on hard mode. Up next is Carnage, who is sadly on the same tier as Venom. He will always hit you first when you approach him unless you stun him with your webbing first. On hard mode, he also kicks you off him very fast after you grab him. It's a little funny considering how easy he is to break when you do have webbing. And as near as I can tell, the chase with Monstrock is exactly the same on every difficulty. And for playing through hard mode, you unlock Captain Universe Spidey, who is invincible and deals double damage. If there was anything to be learned from this, it's that trying to play through a video game without one of its core mechanics will yield problems, and Stanley is always right. Common sense stuff, really. <laughs> 